obviously the big news uh, coming out that Solo is not returning. Just your thoughts on what he's meant to you and, and this club. Oh, Solo has meant everything to me. It's, um, you know, there's a few people in your career that uh, that have as much an impact uh, on your life that in, um, for him, what he did for me as a captain, uh, as a leader of the team, how he helped me, supported me, trusted me, the relationship was phenomenal. You know, I've spoke to him all through the off season, um, kind of back and forth, hoping to figure things out. But uh, unfortunately, you know, that's football, as we say, that uh, hopefully he finds another huge opportunity, which I'm sure he will. He's earned it. Um, but we're going to miss him, and I'm going to miss him tremendously. He's He's almost, uh, I wouldn't say a son, he's, he's like a brother to me. So, um, so I'm sure someday we'll be able to get him back here, hopefully, and maybe do a charity match or something like that, because I, I know he's got big things brewing in his future. Uh, since he was a captain for so many years, uh, what was your message for, for the teammates that were with him before, <laughs> now that he's not here? Um, well, we have a lot of leaders in this team. You know, there's a lot of guys that when they come here, they were captains at their previous club. So uh, what it's really done is it's opened up opportunity. It's opened up change. Uh, the culture will, will probably redefine itself. Um, but what I'm really excited about is the guys that we do have. You know, you have Darnell and Joey Farrell, Joey Calistri, Aiden Quinn, Kevin Lambert. We have, we have quite a few veterans that have been around for a while. and. I'm not. Uh, I'm not worried about who the next captain will be, and uh, he's going to be following in a line of some very, very special players, and and he'll be special himself. How nice is it to have so much of that midfield core intact from last season to this season, keeping that continuity? Uh, it's massive. Anytime you can keep a group together at this level, it's very difficult. You don't see players signing for multiple year contracts very often in the USL and I think that's something that Bobby Dooley and our ownership has supported me on and um, we don't I don't want to turn the team over every year that's not our goal is to replace the whole group of players but um, I think we brought in some really special talents I'm very excited about them uh, but yeah having Aiden Arturo Kev uh, Luis you know, and then you, and then now you add Carlos Anguiano and, and Jonathan, and I think this team's going to be uh, pretty special in the midfield. What's the situation with Jadine White? Um, right now, he's here on trial. So, Rick, was the decision with Solo that just come down to the business of football? I think so. Yeah, yeah. Can't really comment too much on that, but um, at the end of the day, it's you know, uh, if we had a the highest budget in the USL like everyone thinks and it would just be easy to sign these guys all the time but we, we can't do that you know and when you keep players at that level for multiple years at a club you don't want to be disrespectful and ask them to take pay cuts and at some point you have to make the most difficult decisions and um, but I, I'm I'm not worried about solo I think he'll he'll, he'll do really well and um, it's it's a new chapter in, in Phoenix Rising and um, you know like I said we went from Didier Drogba and Solo Asante, and, and now the next uh, the next captain has some big shoes to fill. Coach, after three trainings, uh, how did you feel about the team? How did you see them after the offseason? Oh my gosh, the energy is fantastic. The desire, the the competition. I'm sure the weather helps a little bit here. Um, the guys are loving it. They're playing really well. Uh, we've we did a fitness test on Sunday where they ran, and and the scores were very high for. So this group coming in, I think, is extremely professional. Um, we've got some really exciting additions, you know, I can't wait to see Babu in a, in a big field, uh, Baba Karanjai, and, and then I think Marcus Epps, you know, is, he's going to bring something different to the team as well, and uh, we still have a few more additions to make to our roster that uh, we're just trying to figure out how to get him into the country. <laughs> who are some of the guys who you kind of envision uh, taking over uh, Solo's role in terms of creating goals, scoring goals up top? Well, last year, I think Santi was the guy that, you know, did most of it. But I think from a creativity standpoint, Aiden Quinn, uh, Arturo Rodriguez, I think this is going to be a big year for Arturo. Um, and then you have, you know, we have a couple of strikers that are coming in that, that I think are going to be very good. Uh, and Marcus, obviously, you know, Marcus is different. He's, from, you know, physically another level. Um, 1v1 with his speed, he can get behind it. You know, it allows us to play a little bit different. You know, we can, instead of always having to press to keep Solo and Santi in high positions, I think 
we can be pretty good on the counterattack, and uh, I'm really excited about our flexibility this year. Cody, throughout the offseason, the tagline for the team has been something to prove. Can you mm-hmm. comment on what that something is? Um, well, I think here at Phoenix Rising, we always talk about winning trophies, you know, and uh, last year we didn't win any trophies, so it's, uh, it's time to get back to that. What I've told our players is that it's about moving forward and not thinking about the past and, and concentrate on the next day. You know, win the next day or, or win today and be the type of team that, that just stays in the moment. Um, it's a little bit different than in years past where we, we set uh, the goals to win championships. We'll still want to do that. That's obvious. The guys came here to win trophies. Um, but I need to make sure they stay focused in the moment because I feel like uh, we've done really well in the season and you've kind of run away from opposition and then you get into the playoffs and you've got to face a little adversity and things don't go your way. Uh, we've got to make sure that we get that back. Is there any added motivation given that one of your rivals lifted the cup last year? No, I'm actually very happy that it was in the West. You know, it's, that's good. I'm, it's a conference that we're in, and uh, it was good to see them win it. And I think, uh, you know, they, they've done a really good job. They had uh, a, a stout performance in the playoffs, and, you know, that's the way playoffs go. And um, I still am a firm believer that uh, playoffs are, are difficult for any team. You know, not always the the best team wins the championship. Not saying that they weren't because they've got the trophy, but uh, over the long haul of 34 games, I think it's impressive to see what you know clubs like Louisville and Tampa and ourselves and even Birmingham now are, are starting to produce. I think that's good for the league. What do you think you've learned the most the past few seasons, especially with COVID and things of that nature, that maybe you can implement in this season moving forward to maybe even make the team better than they have been in the past? Uh, good question. For me, um, I think my management style has changed quite a bit. You know, we've got a much bigger staff than we've ever had before. We've had a lot of change in the staff. Uh, so it's actually learning how to ask more questions, uh, ask more questions of the players, ask more of the staff rather than tell. Uh, and I think that's allowed guys to to really take responsibility, to grow, to improve as coaches, to improve as mentors. And for the players, when they take ownership, um, it's pretty impressive what, what that can do to a group. And, you know, with all the challenges that these young men have had to overcome for the last couple of years with COVID and, and all of us, um, I think for them to have some, a little bit of control on, on their life and what they want to do, it's important. So it's, um, for me, I would say learning the, having the ability to listen and just ask questions a little bit more. How are you looking to get out of this year's preseason games versus the MLS squad? Mostly fitness, no injuries. Um, we expect to be defending a lot in both games, um, but it gives us an opportunity to really work against a high-level opposition. In years past, we were fortunate enough to play most of our preseason against MLS, but I think the way the schedules are offset and with CONCACAF Champions League, now, now we don't get as many opportunities. Um, so it's kind of a measuring stick, you know, you, you want to go out there. They're all two weeks ahead of us, so that makes it difficult. But, um, you know, I, I'm really excited. Houston with Paulo as their coach, it's going to be fun. Um, and then, you know, playing against Sporting is, is always an honor. And, and my respect for Peter Vermees is, is so high. And, and I love that we get to train and watch him every day and, and learn from them and, and hopefully uh, have a good opportunity to play against them. How has Juan's uh, departure affected things day to day? Um, well, it, it gave other opportunities. You know, Danny Stone has really stepped up in, on the staff, and uh, we've added a couple more. We've kind of split the roles a little bit from Juan and Sean into more specific roles in the staff, which I'm really excited about. For the first time ever, we have an analyst, uh, an offsite analyst that watches training. You know, and then uh, gives us kind of his thoughts and his ideas. He's got a lot of experience in the pro game, so um, it's it's allowed me to kind of do something a little different and just get more eyes on the team and take in more information. What goes into selecting who's going to wear the next armband? And have you guys selected? <laughs> uh, I have, I, and it's man, it's all encompassing. Uh, respect from his teammates. Uh, quality of the person he is, the character. Does he uh, does he live our core values here? Um, is he the type of person that everybody in the club can look up to? 
And uh, as I said, you know, with Didier, you had just, a, he'd walk in the door and everyone respected him. With Solo, uh, an infectious laugh and everyone loved him and he proved it on the field. And, and I know the next captain, without a doubt, is, is very well respected and um, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be exciting. I've got a good relationship with him, so uh, we'll announce it soon, I'm sure. I know it's early, but what do you think are one of the biggest strengths of this team and maybe a weakness <laughs> or something that you really are trying to hone in on as the season begins and progresses throughout? Uh, uh, generally, everyone probably knows that our strength is our transitional moments going forward, uh, our defensive pressure weakness, I think, is that when we have to defend in long spells, um, you know, and, and sit a little bit deeper, we weren't very comfortable in, the, in those moments last year. So. Um, that's not, there's no big secrets that I think everyone in USL and all the other coaches know that about us. But for us, uh, you know, we, we do what we do well and we keep working on that. I, I'm not the kind of coach that really just focuses on weaknesses. I, I want to accentuate our strengths and, and make sure that, that we are the most aggressive and dynamic team in the league. And I still have a goal of scoring, a, trying to score 100 goals in the league and haven't hit it yet. So we'll, we'll, we'll get after it, I'm sure. Um, well, there was, but we recently acquired a player, and and I'm really excited for everyone to, to see the guy that's come in. And you know, I can't wait for Greg Hurst to get back in the country and um, start training with the guys. But we've got a few trialists I think that are doing well. But overall, we're too deep at every spot. Um, I don't expect a lot of changes for the first time uh, in my history coaching here. We don't have any loans going into the season, and. Uh, not that I'm adverse to it, but I'm excited to have our guys, 22 of our guys. How do you feel about the East Coast games you've been given? Uh, they sure as heck didn't take it easy on us, and I think it's awesome. I can't wait. Uh, there's some cities I've never been to, um, but look, I've always dreamt of a, of a single table and playing everybody twice, and well, this is we're getting closer. <laughs> With the, going back to the playoffs, obviously this year is going to be another new format, kind of like the NFL with getting a bye. And do you think that's something that will you know, help you guys out should you be that team? <laughs> well, we haven't played one game yet, so that's a tough question to answer. But, um, yeah, we always want to be at the top. We want to win the conference. We would like to have the best record in the league. Those are, those are goals that we set as an organization and if you have the best record in in the league then yeah you'll get that by but I think what, the way we talk about things is those rewards come from the weekly performances you know and at the end of the season you've earned what you get um, and if we're in that position to receive a buy that would be fantastic yeah. a few changes in the back four how's that uh, I guess unit shaping up uh, competition right now is phenomenal um, I think Babu and Ryan are really competing and then you know Darnell is is a solid veteran and Channing's got a lot to learn it right back but we're really excited about his his potential and what he's got you know we brought him out of college because we think that he's really really got a bright future and to learn from Darnell is is massive you know and then the back um, Musa Manu and Joey Farrell it's uh, you know hopefully we keep them all fit and keep them competing and as soon as Niles back in fit training we'll we'll, uh, we'll have the four so you look at some of the younger guys last year um, Arturo Rodriguez obviously stepped up big Ryan Flood started the season strong and then fell out of the picture Ivan Gutierrez kind of it you know not really involved that much what should we expect out of them this year well I think Arturo has the potential to be you know in, in the conversation for one of the better players in, in the league um, you know, and uh, with Ivan, he's got to compete, you know, to, to get his time here, and he knows that, and he's got a really a refreshed attitude, and, and he's excited. And Ryan, it was, uh, we, he started, it was a rookie year, and like most rookies, you come out of the gates flying, you're super confident. We bring in Tate Schmidt, your confidence gets hit a little bit, and he wasn't prepared to, to deal with it. So uh, his, his responsibility this year will to be able to maintain a, a level head throughout the year, and um, you know, hopefully has puts consistent performances together. But again, he's it's not going to be easy. Babakar's a, a very good player.